Well, you all have probably been wondering where I've gone. I didn't go anywhere. It's just that I haven't been making videos, but I've been busy. Pretty busy. I actually have spent at least the past month, if not two, drowning in computer work. I mean, just so much stuff to do, to the point that, oh man, I'm surprised I got it all done anyway. And people just have one disaster after another, uh, places send me the wrong parts, it's just, it's been its own little saga, uh, but I don't really recall all the details at this point, because it was such a long period of time. So, work. Number one reason that I have not been around is work. Number two reason is YouTube. YouTube is not really something that I feel like I want to do. Um, now, don't panic, because I haven't finished saying what I'm going to say. But YouTube is not a great business decision. Um, just in general, one of the biggest problems with YouTube is that you can't make money on YouTube to the point that it can support you. So that means that whatever you do on YouTube has to be a hobby. Well, if I'm honest with myself, that means that I should only make videos when I feel like making videos. And what does that mean? Oh, it means that I'm just not making videos during a busy month <laughs> or two months. It means that if I don't feel like doing it, I'm just not going to do it. There's no way that I'm going to ever replicate the success of the original Windows 11 Must Be Stopped video. That will not happen. Uh, I, it, it was a flash in the pan, and I have come to accept that. So, I have like 35,000 subscribers, but only about 100 of them actually watch my content when I make some. So, and man, my camera is shaking all over the place, so I'm surprised if you can see me at all. But where does, where does that leave anybody? I mean, just, what is the point of making videos if nobody watches them, right? Well, I have a small, loyal subscriber base that actually does watch most of the stuff I put out. And what do you want to see? You probably want to see all kinds of tech stuff. Lately, <laughs> the things that have sort of made me want to make videos are political things, because there's so much stupid to go around that it's kind of amazing to me, but I don't really want to do that either, you know? So let me tell you what I am doing. One of the big things that I started to do is write a new program. If, you, if you've looked into my GitHub or my website or whatever, you probably know by now that I make a tool called JDupes, J-D-U-P-E-S, it's a duplicate scanner that finds exact duplicate files and has all kinds of conditions and actions and so on and so forth. And I forked it from FDupes, which was, well, it's been around since 1999 and uh, frankly is uh, not, not the greatest piece of software. The guy wouldn't accept my contribution, so I just said, screw it, I'll fork it. And I forked it. So. There you go. For years now, JDupes has been a big friggin' thing. And I've constantly wanted to do a rewrite to get rid of that guy's code, the uh, original author's code, and have everything be clean. There are some things in JDupes that, to this day, still cause me problems that were written by someone else, and I don't like it. Huh, that was interesting. So, I want to rewrite JDupes, but... The more I thought about it, the more I realized that rewriting JDupes is kind of a pain in the butt for not a lot of gain in and of itself. And I started to accumulate a list of things that I wanted to do more easily. Um, things that it would be nice if a utility existed that could do it, but they, it didn't. So I started to flirt with the idea of making maybe sort of a library of code that I could use to make several tools. If you've ever used BusyBox, BusyBox is a multi-tool sort of program. It's uh, a bunch of smaller versions of system tools for a complete working Linux system, actually. 
Um, and it doesn't have to be Linux, it actually runs in other places now. But, one of the big things with BusyBox is you get all the tools you need in one binary. Uh, I wasn't going to do that, but I was going to do something similar where various file tools that I wish existed could all just sort of be packed under one umbrella using a library that all of these separate tools would go back to. And as I continued to think about this, I realized, okay, I wanted to make JDupes 2 for a lot of reasons, including throwing out a lot of the bad choices that were put into the original thing I forked, uh, but also to improve performance, because one of the big things now is that massively multiprocessor systems exist, and threading and solid state drives and all this, you know, that, that stuff was never part of the consideration for the original FDupes program. It just wasn't. Uh, man, I wish I could get that camera to stop wiggling, but I don't think I can. So, because these um, considerations existed, yeah, the more I think about it, the more ridiculous it gets. Um, I wanted to make a tool that could do this stuff, and I, and I realized I couldn't just do that uh, without effectively creating my own giant pile of generalized routines, just like a busy box has like certain like print whatever in this certain way, and then that code gets shared across 50 different tools. Well, if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to have to write this whole big complicated library. So why would I do that and not have some easy way to work with this library? From there, it went from, let's make a code library that can be used to build a bunch of neat tools, to, uh, you know what, let's just, uh, in instead of building a code library, let's just write a programming language. And that language, every, you know, you call the code in the library through the language. So, I've actually got a project now called Jofito, or Jofito, or jo I don't know. If you want to propose a pronunciation, feel free to do so in the comment section. But it's spelled J-O-F-I-T-O, and it stands for Jody's File Tool, or Jody's File Management Programming Tool, whatever. But this Jofito program that I am in the extremely early stages, I don't have anything really working yet, um, of doing, it's going to be something that I can write JDupes in again using its own language. So I will have these code libraries and routines and so on that, that do the things that JDupes does under the hood, but instead of those things just being like locked in through C code, you can actually just say like take these strings and do this to them instead of, you know, memory allocate, blah, 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 whatever, you know, open file, check for error, blah, blah, blah you know, abstract away a lot of that stuff. And part of the, part of the push to do this, part of the, the motivation is because JDupes doesn't have any kind of notion of threading, you know, asynchronous input out, whatever. It doesn't have any of this modern stuff. It's a simple tool that does a simple job and it does it well, but it could do it better. I've always wanted to make it possible for uh, for example, if you have a file on two different drives that you're checking for matches, then you want to be able to read both files at the same time and then check the part that you've read from those files. But the idea is you, be, you should be reading both drives at once. You shouldn't be reading one drive and then when it's done, switch to the other drive because that's half as fast. And the same thing, you know, if you've got like eight different files, okay, you have eight files and they're on eight drives, why can't you scan, why can't you read all eight at once? Why not? Because the program is not written that way. It's not designed to deal with things like multi-threading or whatever. And then to actually do that, you have to have 
Um, that one of the big problems I've found that nobody solved in programming here yet, and there are ways to do it, but it's very OS dependent, <clears throat> is if I read this file on this device, and I read this other file on this other device, will they conflict such that they actually compete and slow each other down instead of being able to work cooperatively? Because, for example, a hard drive that has four partitions, technically, that's four different volumes, that's four different file systems, and naively speaking, that's four completely different device and inode numbers under Unix or Linux or whatever, but they're the same actual physical device. It's the same hard drive running all of this stuff. So because it's the same hard drive that's behind it all, well, think about that for a second. It's going to be bouncing back and forth, unless it's a solid state drive. In which case, solid state drives actually can parallelize very nicely depending on their layout. But fundamentally, you need to know, is this on the same device or not? Because if you've got a bunch of hard drives that aren't solid state, and you try to read them in parallel, but they turn out to be the same drive, well, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot because now each thread's going to read at under a megabyte a second instead of potentially over a hundred. It makes sense to read everything sequentially on a hard drive, and it, especially if multiple file systems share the same physical device. It does not make sense to read sequentially when you have multiple hard drives. That's just ridiculous, because now you've got a bunch of drives, <clears throat> and all of those drives together will be able to push more data than if they were apart. It's also possible that, for example, you have a bunch of drives on the same, um, like say you have a SATA expander, so they're all on one port. Well, if there's an expander involved, and there's some way to find out that there's an expander involved, then you don't want to touch all those drives at the same time because they'll be fighting for the bandwidth, and you'll basically have a, a fragment of the bandwidth available. It, in that case, it may make sense to limit the number of things you try to touch at once. But if I figure all that out, well, that's great, but I still need to take advantage of it. That means that the tool needs to be rewritten from scratch and it needs to be written with threading in mind. And the idea behind the language is that in the language you'll be able to say, okay, I want you to take this list of files and I want you to compare the contents or hash the contents uh, or whatever. And then, because you're telling the programming language, I want you to do this operation to all of these items in this list. You'll be able, the, the, the program should be able to then look at the underlying device structure and go, wait a minute, okay, these are on different physical drives, or the underlying drive is a serial AT, or it's a, I mean, a solid state drive. Therefore, we can do this in parallel. We do not have to do this serially. And because we can do this in parallel on this device or across these devices, that's exactly what we're going to do. Because the language knows you want to do the same thing to a lot of files, so it can fire off, you know, file reader threads, and then those threads can feed the data to hashing or comparing threads, and all this stuff can be getting done at once. Man, these highways are rough. But since all this stuff can be done at once, um, you'll be able to do this duplicate scanning stuff a lot faster. You know, and anything that can be parallelized you into threads and, you know, whatever, the program can optimally handle it based on what it sees you have. And that eliminates the entire problem that I have where I'm like, well, I want to be able to, like, read two files at the same time and compare them, which would, be, which would actually be very handy across volumes, and I could hack into JDoops um, 
with some pain. <clears throat> but, you know, it, it grew from just, let's write JDoops 2.0. Just rewrite it from scratch. You know, get rid of the old code. To, well, I have these other things I want to do. Let's, let's write a code library and then share it across a set of Jody utilities. To just, screw it. Let's write a whole new programming language. And let's write the utilities in that new language. Because the beauty of this is that when I get this language finished up, uh, no, I say finished up, but you know, a project like that never really finishes. But when I get it to where it does what I want it to do on a basic level, what we'll be looking at is a beautiful thing. I can write all of these tools in a fraction of the time and if the stuff isn't there that the tools need, I can add library functions to put them there. <clears throat> and because the program will generalize out a lot of this stuff, yes, it technically, you know, it's for sequential, it'll be a little slower than JDoops. Hang on. But... While it will be slower if it were also using the traditional sequential model, uh, it won't be that much slower, and taking advantage of multi-threading, multiple devices, and so on, the difference will absolutely just blow away everything else. It, it just, it'll, it'll be amazing. Anyway. So that's what I've been up to. Ooh, it got dark. Wait for the tunnel to go away. It got real dark and real bright. So that's what I've been up to. And uh, like I said, it's still in the early phases. Um, other things, if you've been paying attention to my posts, I bought a laptop brand new for $108. It's an Asus E210MA which is a model number that actually has a lot of sub-model numbers that are very different from one another. <clears throat> this one has 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of eMMC uh, SSD memory, and it has an M2 slot. I wish it had a RAM slot, but it has an M2 slot. I bought it just so I could work on stuff like this file tool, programming language I'm working on, and, and I could just take it with me and have something with me for that. But also, I'm running Linux Mint Cinnamon. So now, instead of just telling everyone that I run Linux on my servers and Windows on my clients or whatever, now I'm actually dogfooding when you use your own product, so to speak. And it's not really dogfooding. But now I'm actually using Linux Mint on something instead of just telling everyone else they should. And... Um, Actually, I, I've found that Linux has reached a point where um, I kind of don't understand why Windows is getting so much slower. When Linux Mint on this like Celeron laptop, this $100 laptop, is, it feels faster. Like Everything it does feels faster than just... Even my Ryzen 9 desktop, this little laptop feels snappier. And it's not down to raw speed. We know a Celeron is a joke compared to a Ryzen 9 in terms of processing power. Especially this one, it only has two threads instead of four or whatever. <clears throat> but, despite that, this Celeron laptop with Linux Mint feels faster. It's because it doesn't take as long to respond to things. It doesn't feel like the interface is lagging the entire time that I'm using it. It's actually been very pleasant. I've been quite happy with it. I have yet to do any heavy duty stuff. Um, I do have my Wacom tablet. I have tested it to make sure it works with Krita. Krita. I don't know how people want to say it. Nobody has a pronunciation guide. So I've tested it and I've made sure that my little graphics tablet works with it. I want to do things like uh, make a RenPy game in it using the laptop, but for now, this file tool really is my passion project, and I'm in the stages of writing the tokenizer on the parser. Um, it's the first stage of a parser where it, it basically does syntax checks 
and converts what it sees into a stream of recognized tokens. It's almost like tagging things. Like, this is this kind of thing. It sort of normalizes the format so that when it gets passed along and those tokens are then analyzed further, um, they don't come in with, like, extra white space and all that. It, it's just you basically get a list of do thing, do thing, do thing. <clears throat> anyway. God, how long have I been talking? I don't actually know. Uh, only 20 minutes. And the camera's still shaking because the highway is rough. So that's, that's where I've gone in terms of tech stuff. YouTube's not a good business thing, so it's a hobby. And I've been working on a passion project on a cheapo laptop that I'm running Linux on as my main system. And I'm so far very happy with the way the Linux desktop has improved over time. Now, on a more personal note, um, I did have a lot of trouble because I'm sure, especially if you uh, saw some of my old videos, there's some of them where I'm just chugging down on whiskey or whatever. And uh, I have largely stopped drinking alcohol. Um, I have mostly stopped eating um, bad, you know, junk food, basically. Or food that is not far off from junk food. So I'm not, I'm, I don't have a, free, a freezer full of large pizzas or anything, not that I ever did, but rather than stuff like that, you know, I might eat chicken and rice and broccoli. I might eat steak. I might have chili. <clears throat> I'm not having garbage to eat and I'm not drinking. And it took a little while for that to make a difference, but yeah, the weight's going down, so, and I know it's it's not really down to the point where you can see it, but you can just trust me, when I stand on the scale, it doesn't say ouch anymore on the display. Instead, it just sort of says owie, it hurt a bit. So, we're, we're, it's a long journey, it took me two decades to get up to fucking 340 pounds. Um, I've actually been bigger but it took two decades to get where I am. I don't expect it all to go away overnight, but I do expect that it's gonna take some time. And uh, you know what? I'm willing to put in that time. It's gonna take a while, so be it. I can't wait to not be fat. Also, not drinking all the time, and I was drinking sugary, heavy alcohol. It wasn't just uh, alcohol, it was also sugar. Not drinking all the time has made me more lucid. So I've gotten into some money management stuff. Um, I've, I'm trying to build up a, uh, a nice emergency fund. You know, basically get savings and investments and all that kind of stuff started. Again, early phases, but making progress. So things are generally looking up for me. And uh, that that's it. I mean, <laughs> things are looking up. Um, I've, I've been doing more business lately. Um, I've gotten more stuff accomplished. I've been cleaning. I've, I, if you have seen the environment that I work in, you know that there's a lot of stuff. There is way too much stuff. And I am in the process of cleaning. I've gotten some of the stuff. I threw away like three or four trash bags worth of just stuff that I still had that I didn't, that I absolutely, without even thinking about it, could just discard. I'm still going through it all, but I'm about to start an eBay selling binge. There is a possibility that I will be selling my Ryzen 9 desktop. So if any of you are, if you've got two grand burning a hole in your pocket and you want to buy a really nice gaming desktop that uh, was built by yours truly, you know, let me know and I'll be happy to sell it to you. I'd prefer local pickup in North Carolina, but hey man. You know, if it's got to be shipped, it's got to be shipped. Although cases are made of glass for some reason these days, and I really get afraid when it comes to, like, shipping stuff like that. And the box is also long gone. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> things are looking up. Things are looking up. Um, but the problem with that is that none of this stuff, you'll notice that in this, the passion project, the, the money stuff, the diet stuff, none of this has anything to do whatsoever with 
YouTube. And that's why you haven't seen me around. Now, am I quitting YouTube? This is sort of what I teased in the beginning. Like, oh, is he just going to stop making videos entirely? No. Are you going to do that stupid UI documentary that you keep on talking about? No. Maybe. Um, I, I don't know where I stand on doing that. But um, I do know that this phone needs to be muted. And that's annoying. It's probably a scammer anyway, knowing my luck. But, yeah, the bottom line is that uh, I don't know whether I'm going to do anything that um, I have hinted at or said that I will. I'm not making any promises. However, it does still sit heavily on my mind that a lot of people were interested in seeing that. A lot of people subscribed, waiting for that. So, I'm not ruling it out. But I'm not making any promises. It is still firmly on the will I finish this maybe list. Um, it, it just, I need to get my house in order. I need to clean my room, as, as Jordan Peterson tells the, kid, the all the cool kids. Um, I need to get my stuff into a better, uh, I just need to be better um, for a while before I can really say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And that's it. I just, I have to get my stuff in order. When I do, we'll talk about it. And I would really like to know what you have to say. Feel free to uh, scribble something down below, letting me know what your thoughts are on all of these crazy revelations. Um, also, one of the things I've thought about is doing some videos, maybe changing gears a bit from complaining about Windows to maybe making some videos about JDupes, for example. How, how do you use that? How, how, you know, here's some examples. Here's how you can use it to find these kinds of files. Here's some of the more advanced features that maybe you're ignoring and maybe you shouldn't be ignoring. But, you know, again, no promises. It's just something I'm floating out there. All right, um, I'm about to run out of freeway here and that's sort of the death knell for this video because I, uh, yeah, I have to actually pay attention. There's going to be idiots trying to get on and off the road, stopping short. So I hope to uh, see you in a future video. I can't wait to read the comments on this one, given that it's my first video in a while. And uh, I will probably be posting this to all of my channels. I have actually put some serious thought into consolidating everything back into just one unified Jody Bruchon channel, but I don't know. I haven't decided on that yet. It seems like it's a good idea to keep the material separate, so for now, that's where it's going to stay. Thanks for listening, watching, etc. Speed limit's dropping, the rigs are stopping, the gas station's nearby. And Daddy needs to take a leak. Take care.